Hey, this is Carl, and I want to talk today about how you troubleshoot and fix a variable resistor or variable potentiometer. So here's the setup. I have this really cool, what they call a barn door LED light system. So it's got variable, two, two different colors of lights, and it's great. But I had a problem where one of the light sets just kept going off and I would like wiggle it a little bit and then it would work and then it would go off. So I suspected it was the variable potentiometer. You may have seen something like this. We'll do a super close up, but basically a variable resistor is a super simple component but it's not perfect. So let's take a look at that light for just a minute, just so you see what it is and what it does. So the light has two different frequencies, which creates two different colors. And I can adjust the brightness of either of them. This is why I didn't really have this thing cranked up when <laughs> it was facing the camera because it would have totally blown out the, the white balance on the camera. But you can see that I can adjust it all the way down to essentially nothing. And it's great for lighting up a room. It's great for choosing the specific color of light that you're looking for. And so it's, it's kind of nice to have for photography and for video. So one of those switches is what went out. And so I would turn it and nothing would happen. And so First, let's take a look at what it looks like on the inside. So the front panel comes off, it's pretty straightforward. Actually taking off the barn doors was more of a pain in the neck than anything else. I marked, do you see the little green hashes? I marked where the screws go because there's so many holes in this thing that I wanted to make it easy to put back together. And since the, the green color on that piece is never going to affect performance, I figured it was a very easy thing to do. Once I take it apart, there's some circuitry underneath the panel on the right, which I don't need to touch. All I did, to be honest, is I just very gently uh, gave each of those wires a little tug to make sure they weren't loose because that might very well have been my problem. But I did verify that the variable potentiometer, as you can see, there's two of them, uh, the one towards the bottom was actually the, the problem. I replicated the problem after I opened up the cover. Next, I looked and just literally took a picture of it so that I could go on Amazon and order a bag full of the, uh, these resistors. So there it is, that's a, <laughs> that's a bag full of variable resistors. You know, you might have one that's a, a 50, uh, K resistor just kind of sitting around, but these were super duper cheap on Amazon. So I figured what the heck, they do come with two different kinds of knobs, which I didn't need, but you know, now I got a bag full of knobs. <laughs> so the first thing I noticed is that the resistors that I bought have leads that go straight out. And the one on the board, the top set of leads were longer and they went out and then they took a curve and went into the bottom board. So I could have unsoldered the original and just put in the new one, except it would be facing in the wrong direction by 90 degrees. So then I thought, well, perhaps what I can do is to unsolder only half of it and then connect the leads to the new resistor. But then I thought, well, let me just take a slightly different approach. So I verified that the casing looks essentially the same. And I thought, okay, I can't go straight in, but what I can do is to snip off that, that top set of leads and figure that I will solder the new one into place. Now on the left, you see the vice grip holding on to the other board that's literally just barely barely touching it it's just enough to keep it in place so that i can muck around with the snippers and with the uh, soldering iron so i snipped through those leads from the existing uh, variable resistor 
And there you can see I've cut through it all the way. Then what I do is I took the bottom off of the new variable resistor and I'm gonna take the insides and stick them into the old one because they're essentially the same thing. So this took a little time, so I won't have you watch every single minute that I'm doing this, but basically I pop open the little tabs that hold the top in place and uh, I'm not using these snippers to cut anything. I'm just using it because I'm too lazy to go get a pair of needle nose. But I just use my tiny little screwdriver to lift up the tabs and then open them up so I can take the top off. Once I have the top off, as long as I've got the thing open, I might as well clean it out so I get a little alcohol and uh, I don't know what they're called, ear swabs. And I, I never use these things on my ear, but they're pretty handy for electronics. I figured I might as well clean it out on the inside. So uh, just a little alcohol and just a little wipe just to make, make sure it's nice and clean. Then I verify that the new resistor components will fit into the case of the old resistor. Once that looks good, then I just go ahead and push it down into place and push the tabs back where they belong. Notice I haven't done anything with the bottom connections, the electrical connections, and I only have the top ones that are now unconnected from the old top connections. I use a little soldering paste to make sure that the connections are nice and clean. Then I solder the new connections from the top of the resistor to the, the top connections from the old resistor. Make sure I got a nice, clean, shiny soldering. And that's pretty much it. It should work. Before I put it together, I might as well plug it in and just turn it on and play with it a little bit, make sure that it works the way it's supposed to. Everything looks good, so let's go ahead and put it back together. So I hold the little bit of circuitry that's got the two variable resistors in place, uh, put the little screws on the back to hold it in place, put the knobs on and the insides are now in place the way they're supposed to be. The hardest part about this job is getting that white panel full of lights inside because it just absolutely barely fits uh, through the metal frame, but it does fit. And so in the end, I put all the screws back in place. There's four on the inside, four on the outside, and I'm ready to go. Finally, I throw all the pieces back together and put it back in its frame. And then I test it once again, just to make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. So just for the record, this, the left side, was not the problem. The right side was the one that didn't work. And now it totally does. It goes from off all to super bright. Now. The bottom line I want you to learn is just super simple. Don't be afraid of electronics. You know, obviously I unplugged this while I was working on it, but you know, some simple stuff like this is almost more mechanical than electronics. So don't be afraid. Remember, it was already broken when you got here. So there's very little that you can do to make the situation any worse.